Hello, this video is to help provide information on reducing test times for your Huntron Access Prober. So let's get started. The first point we want to talk about has to do with ranges. And that would be here in the tree pane on your ranges. One thing you can do is just not test in as many ranges. If you test in less ranges, that means the probe has to spend less time sitting on that pin sampling signatures, and that will therefore speed up your test. So for example, let's go ahead and run this test I have here for component U29. I've got three ranges for that. So let's go ahead and run that. So we'll start that. And let's watch the video here. See how long it takes each pin. I'm going to focus the camera here a little bit while it's probing. There we go. See, it's relatively slow, but it's sampling three signatures for each pin. So now let's go and disable. Well, actually, what I'm going to do here is delete two of the ranges. I generally don't want to test ICs in anything other than 10K ohm range, and so we'll just go ahead and delete this first one. Delete. We'll delete for all pins. And then we'll also delete this other 10 ohm range. We'll select, select, delete, all pins. OK. So now we have just one range on this. So now let's run the same test. OK. Now watch the video. See, it's quite a bit faster. It's only having to spend the time sitting on the probe to sample one signature per pin. I do want to make a point here, though. If you really need to test a component in more than one range, do so. You don't want to sacrifice test quality for speed. We have had users report that changing the frequency to, from low frequencies, such as like 100 hertz, up to maybe possibly 500 hertz also um, decrease test times. Of course, the reason being is that with a faster frequency, that means that, again, the probe does not have to spend so much time sitting on that pin, and therefore it will decrease uh, your test time. However, I would think that would only have a benefit if you're testing hundreds and thousands of pins versus just um, 10 or 20 pins. Another thing you can do at the component level is to reduce the number of correction steps. You see, by default, we have three correction steps. What that means is that when it goes to the component pin number one, it'll check for position using the encoders uh, up to three times and correct for position. If you don't need that kind of accuracy, you can come in here and change this, for example, just to one correction step. That means that when it goes to that position, it'll correct the position only up to one time. So if you're only probing large pads through hole devices and such, you could probably safely change this to one, and your accuracy would just be would be just fine. However, if you are doing very fine pitch devices, I would recommend that you keep that at three correction steps. One other thing you can do here is at the sequence level, and when you uh, scan a sequence, by default we have the Z home between components turned on. That means that when it moves from one component to the next, the probe goes all the way home. So let me illustrate that for you. We'll start a sequence scan here. Start and scan sequence. Turn the, cam the camera on. It'll go up and probe the component here in the back, go all the way home, and then start probing the next component. All right. So by turning off that Z home between components, we we'll uncheck that and run that scan again. Scan sequence. You see now when it moves from the capacitor over to the IC that it only moved to the sequence Z up position. All right. So that position is set here in your teach height. And that is your sequence Z up position. Now, do be careful. You want to make sure that the sequence Z up position is high enough to get over the tallest component on the board. In that case, that would probably be these inductors in the back. You don't want to be breaking and damaging any probes. So again, make sure your sequence Z up is high enough to get over the tallest component on the board if you're going to turn off the Z home between components. Typically, we won't do that on circuit boards such as this one. If I was probing the other side where there's no tall components or possibly probing the solder side of a through hole board, then you could safely turn off the Z home between components without uh, worrying about hitting the probe on anything tall. One more thing you can change in the tree 
would be to optimize the component position. So to do that, you would go to the pin order column, right click, and select set by location. And what this will do is it'll look at the location of pin one of every component in your sequence and reorder them based on its location. Now, this typically won't have much impact if you're developing the test manually because you generally are putting the components into your tree in the order that you want to probe them. However, if you do use CAD data to create your, your test, then using the set by location feature is a very important step. So I'll go ahead and select a set by location. It's going to say sort components by location. Say yes. And you say they were slightly modified. So it's going to go from C96 and then go through each of these devices. And finally, the last thing I want to show you to help you reduce test times is to modify the up and down position of probing individual components. And this applies specifically to components with a large number of pins. So let's, for example, use U28 to modify. So if we go to the current position, let me go ahead and click on pin number one for that component, and then click the move. And we look and see where the probe is set right here. You can see this is the sequence Z up position. So as it moves between pins, this is the level it's going to move to. But in reality, what I really want to do is have this probe a much lower level. So in the teach height, you can select, first of all, let's move our probe down to where we want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and modify the probe down. And let me show you the video. See, I'm going to put it down right about here. Maybe a little bit lower. Back to the video. So you can see I've got it quite a bit lower. The thing I want to make sure is that when the pro goes from one side of the, of the IC to the next side, that it gets high enough to get over the corner of the component. All right, and that looks pretty good. I've got maybe a millimeter or two of clearance above the pin to the, over the body of the component. So what we'll do is in this teach height, we'll save that as our component Z up. So let's save. So typically what you do is when you create your test, you will set the sequence Z up and sequence Z down for the entire sequence. And then if you want to modify individual components, you would select those in the tree, such as U28, and then you can modify their component Z up. All right, so now let's watch this component probe. Go ahead and scan this guy. Just the individual component, start, and click OK. And I'll turn the video on here so you can watch this probe down. See, it's going at a much lower level now. So the z-axis is no longer having to travel quite so far as it moves between pins. And you watch it go all the way down this row. And it goes over the corner right there. You see it probing the backside. So that can help reduce your test times quite significantly, especially if you have a lot of components with a lot of pins. Well, that's all I have to show you right now. If you have any comments, please post those below and be sure to give us a like or subscribe here on YouTube. And again, we appreciate your time and thank you for watching.